Sing you the hat and yet the cheese miss. Come on. When I wake up, I feel cozy, yeah. Can you hold up? Don't need no coffee yet. I've got no makeup. How do you look so fine? Bless up, bless up. Okay, here we are at Kildalton Cross in the southern part of the island and it's about 1300 years old and it was sculpted by the early Christians who came this way from Ireland, we believe. This is one of Kildalton. As you can see, it's the cross. It was out of Christ and the sun behind it. Magnificent. What should we make? The washing. Poor charity. Yeah, uh, what's it called that? Oh, yeah. Hill Dalton, right here. Quite interesting. This is one of the oldest uh, parish churches in Manila. It's lying derelict now, but yeah, but it's still held in high esteem by the locals. The Kildalton Cross is a monolithic high cross in Celtic cross form in the churchyard of the former parish church of Kildalton, Church of the Foster Son, on the island of Isla in the Inner Hebrides, Scotland. It was carved probably in the second half of the 8th century AD and is closely released to crosses of similar date on Iona. It is often considered the finest surviving Celtic cross in Scotland and is certainly one of the most perfect monuments of its date to survive in Western Europe. The cross and the adjacent roofless medieval parish church are in the care of Historic Environment Scotland and are jointly a scheduled ancient monument, a simpler cross of late medieval date stands nearby. The presence of the Kildalton Cross in the churchyard shows that there was a religious foundation at Kildalton for many centuries before the church whose remains still stands was built, and the grignore of the cross is a strong indication that Kildalton was home to an important early monastery. So yeah, we're heading to Ardbeg Distillery now, guys. So today we're here in Ardbeg Isla Malt Whiskey. Look at this massive one. So let's get inside. It's beautiful here. I like it. Look at that. It's like a Japanese. Um, what you call that? Yeah. 
The Ardbeg Distillery has been producing whiskey since 1798 and began commercial production in 1815. Like most Scottish distilleries, for most of its history, its whiskey was produced for use in blended whiskey rather than as a single malt. By 1886, the distillery produced 300,000 gallons of whiskey per year and employed 60 workers. Production was halted in 1981 but resumed on a limited basis in 1989 and continued at a low level through late 1996. During the period when artwork was owned by Hiram Walker, in 1997, the distillery was bought and reopened by Glen Moray G. Peck, subsequently taken over by the French company LVMH on 28th of December 2004, with production resuming on 25th June 1997. So, dito kami sa La Paz, kasi sa loob. Busy dun. Daming tao. No space. Just showing you guys their toilet. This is a magnificent art. I like it. Look. Look at that. Artistic. So of all the distilleries na napuntahan namin, this is the best for me. Yeah, I mean, ito ang pinakamagandang uh, distillery so far. Look at this, guys. I just love it. Ito yung mga barrel para sa whiskey. Parang mas maluwag to kesa dun sa Bowmore at saka sa Laproik. The smell, the smell of the malt and when they turn the grain over and over and over at a certain temperature, it reminds me of my childhood. It's a very distinctive smell. Effluent plant, let's have a smell on the wash bag. Different smells of the distilleries. This is the peat I'm talking about, cut from the ground. Oh, peat. This is peat, yeah, it's like... Peatak. It's, like, it's basically like a, a type of earth, it's like ancient vegetation that's been conjoined together to make... And they dry it out and you can burn it in your fires oh, and see. you can smoke the whiskey. Okay. What's your favourite bit of peat? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. And these are the, the stills. That's the wash still and that's the spirit still. That's what it says. Whiskey.
this is the Arctic Bay. And I guess uh, that's us for today, guys. See you again next time. Cheers.